All right. So, purpose of this video is twofold. One is to uh, talk a little bit about what I got going on here with my Sega 12 gauge, and the other one is just for me to look at <laughs> and dream about it because um, I'm getting ready to go to work here and I'm not gonna be able to take it with me. But uh, I wanted to show so move this camera here. I wanted to show a few things about this. I uh, when I first bought this, it was totally stock. It was sporterized, what they what they call uh, basically neutering the Sega 12 gauge, which is the um, it's the Russia Russian Special Forces uh, Spetsnaz um, shotgun, and uh, but they neuter it. It looks nothing like this. It's uh, plain Jane. You really, if you saw it in the gun store, you would have no idea that it could look or perform uh, the way it does, the way it, it's supposed to. So anyway, I uh, when I first got this thing, man, I uh, I tacked it out. You know, I um, cut off the the stock, um, um, put this adjustable buttstock on there. Did all that. Put the pistol grip, move the trigger group forward. Um, I got this uh, heat shield. I had a uh, aluminum handguard here. I had an auto gas plug, you know. Um, I had a different muzzle brake than this. But I basically, I got most of my information from uh, the Sega 12 forum. And now after having this for almost two years and having about literally 10,000 plus rounds through it. I've really, you know, I've learned the gun well. I know what works and what doesn't with it. And I'm able to really um, cut through a lot of the bullshit I see on the forums, which I realize most of it is just people, you know, um, just making shit up. <laughs> I don't know if there's any other way to say it than that, but. Um, but that's, that's what happened when I first got it. I, I decked it out, and I had the occasion to do some skeet shooting with some buddies of mine, and they, you know, they all brought their shotguns, all their favorites, one of which was a Benelli. And Benelli is a light, sweet shooter, very ergonomic. It was really long, but it was, it was a nice, nice shotgun. And it really got me thinking, you know, um, that I needed to shed some weight, make this thing lighter so I could handle it quicker. Um, so that's what I did. I started shedding weight. The first thing I did was get rid of this uh, TAC 47 auto plug. Um, this, uh, this is the gas block of the Sega 12. Inside of there is what's called a gas puck, which is like a hockey puck. And as the gas is um, pushing the projectile out of the barrel, some of the gas bleeds up into this gas tube, pressurizes this chamber and slams the gas puck into the piston, which is attached to the bolt carrier, which is how the gun cycles, you know, um, AK piston action. But the gas plug on um, the factory has to be manually set from high brass to low brass. So I was I bought into the whole um, auto gas plug where it's spring loaded, you calibrate it and you never have to touch it. Um, especially when this thing gets hot, you don't want to touch it. But what I realized is um, this thing, and the Sega's got a bad rap, but this thing is so reliable that I can shoot, um, I can shoot everything, even low brass, which it's a combat shotgun. It's not designed to shoot low brass. It's main, it's main uh, mainly for buckshot and slugs. But this thing it defies the reputation that Sega's have as being unreliable with low brass. Um, so uh, I just ditched the TAC 47. I actually shed about five ounces by doing that. I also got rid of that big, heavy aluminum handguard I had on, and I went back to the factory handguard on this thing. It didn't look like this. This is it. Um, I, I lined up, measured my holes. I used a drill press, and I pressed them all in. I actually cut this little notch out right here on both sides and um, smoothed it off on the edges. Um, so, you know, obviously Swiss cheesing up the, the handguard like this helped me shed weight too. I got rid of the, the muzzle brake that I had and I put this one on there. It's a little bit lighter. Um, I, uh, I had a heavier um, pistol grip. 
I had a I had a uh, Magpul ACS L, but I ended up going with the Magpul uh, C. Um, I don't know what what you call it, but the, you know anyone who knows anything about guns knows what this is. It's a different lighter Magpul. Didn't really need it. Um, one cool feature about this thing though, um, being a uh, a 12 gauge semi-auto 12 gauge with um, high capacity magazines. I figured I'd better do as much as I could to take the recoil out of it. And so I ordered this um, hydraulic recoil reducer here. Um, and it's made by a company called Enadyne. And they contract with the Department of Defense for the United States Armed Forces. And um, anyway, this thing basically, it's, it's kept open uh, in the open position with springs. But once the recoil hits it, that's when the hydraulic action kicks in and it squeezes fluid through tiny holes. It really takes a lot out of it. And also the muzzle brake here, um, you know, helps to, you know, stop the recoil somewhat. And uh, there's videos on YouTube where um, you can really see, they freeze frame it, they, they make points on the screen of, you know, uh, before it's fired, after it's fired, with and without muzzle brakes. And the muzzle brakes really do a lot to help it. Um, this heat shield here that's covering the gas tube, vented gas tube cover, um, that really is nice because when I'm, you know, if I, if I'm empty in a 20 round drum mag, the barrel, the gas tube, everything's really hot. I mean, and I'll go through a hundred rounds. I'll just, I'll just do mag changes and, uh, and just go right through it. And I got this red dot on here and uh, I'll see if I can show you, um, I, the, the Sega 12 factory configuration has a really short sight radius. And there, you can see the little little tiny bead right there. That's the front bead, and then the the rear sight was here. So that's a really short sight radius from my thumb to my pinky, and it was very accurate. But it was difficult to do a rapid uh, target acquisition. So I went with this this red dot here, and it's actually a 65 MOA ring with a, a dot in the middle of it. And I'll see if I can show you what that looks like. I got it on right now. I don't know if I can. If I can show you that, there, there you go. So that's really nice. I got it zeroed in with slugs and everything. But the other thing that I did was um, I welded a left side charging handle on there. And this charging handle right here, th this is uh, this was the factory charging handle that came with it. Let's just point that out. Um, but it's on the right hand side, and I wanted. I wanted more ergonomic out of this thing, you know, like I was saying about, I tried the Benelli. So, I cut this slot out of the dust cover. You can see that slot I cut out there. And this was the original factory trigger from Russia that came with it. And I just recycled it and welded it onto the bolt carrier and made it my left side charging handle. Now I had to remove the typical Sega sight rail here, which was... Um, a cutting hazard if I'd left it on there, you know, racking the bolt back on the left side, it would have, that side, side sight mount, um, which is typical AKs, would have cut my hand. So I got rid of that, I drilled out the rivets on that, filled it in, made it nice and seamless here. Um, but now as a result of that, I do not have to take the gun off of my shoulder to change it out. See, before, with the charging handle on the right side right here, when I would take a magazine out, put a new one in, I'd take it off my, off my shoulder, rack it, put it back on my shoulder. But now, with this thing on here, with this left side charging handle, when I change out a mag, I put the mag back in, or a new mag, rack it, and I'm good to go. So, it cuts down on the time it takes to reload magazines and uh, it's just absolutely disgusting. It makes the AK much more ergonomic and I you know people ask me you know Chris why would you want a, uh, a 12 gauge with that comes with 20 round drum mags and uh, I guess my answer for that um, being ex-infantry is that I mean they're they're thinking like a civilian um, superior firepower <laughs> is what makes the United States Army so great and that doctrine gets ingrained into you and uh, I don't think that ever really leaves leaves your uh, mode of thinking um, 
so I love this, I absolutely love this thing. And, you know, <laughs> my mind's kind of funny. I, I was thinking the other day, I was like, you know, you know, just some bizarre thought, you know, just sitting back having a cold one thinking, um, if I, if I could go back in time with this shotgun and unlimited rounds, I would rule the kingdom. <laughs> I'd be like King Arthur and this would be my Excalibur. <laughs> so thought about etching, uh, or, you know, um, um, uh, what, etching the, uh, the word Excalibur, the name Excalibur under this thing. But uh, an interesting factoid about the Sega 12 gauge is it has a 600 rounds per minute firing rate. Uh, well, that's when it's on full auto. And the only thing that really comes close to the Sega 12 is the AA-12. And um, I'm sure anyone who knows anything about shotguns knows how badass the AA-12 is. The recoil is completely mitigated. And what I mean by that is the recoil spring is so long that the bolt carrier, when, the, when it's cycling and it's going, going to the rear, it never bottoms out. The, re, the, the recoil spring is so long that the, the bolt carrier never bottoms out. So all of the recoil is completely internal. Um, there's no muzzle rise. But again, that's, that's um, part of what this is for, the muzzle brake on this. Um, and you know, it's, it, it's got the little, the little teeth on here if you wanted to do door breach or anything like that. But uh, so the AA-12 has a maximum firing rate of 300 rounds per minute. Uh, whereas the Sega has uh, a maximum firing rate on full auto of 600 rounds per minute. And it has a reputation in the Sega 12 as being the, um, the fastest cycling semi-auto shotgun in the world. Um, but uh, it's just, it's badass. I mean, it's, it, this thing is, right now the way I've got it, it's, it's really sweet. The only thing I could do right now to, to improve it is get a set of backup iron sights, which I am going to do, you know, because, yeah, I carry a spare battery in here for the red, you know, in, inside of the little compartment in the pistol grip. Um, but if this thing were to ever get banged or something like that, and I carry, a, I carry the Allen wrench too to remove it, uh, it sure would be nice to have some, like, Krebs combat sight, something steel that, that won't, uh, won't fold or break under pressure. Um, but again, I mean, it's just... I mean, <laughs> Uh, it's just this left side charging handle is just it's just a bomb. Magazine thing. Keep it, it never it never leaves your shoulder. It just never leaves your shoulder. Never leaves your shoulder. I love it. So anyway, I just wanted to make this video. I know this camera is kind of choppy, but um. Oh, another thing. I've got about 10,000 over the last two, two and a half years. And um, really know the weapon well. And something that's really odd about it, I don't know if it's just I got lucky or it's what I do to clean it. The other day I was firing um, the, bulk, the bulk stuff from Walmart. And uh, they just dropped the price on that um, from like 30 bucks for 100 federal target loads. Uh, to 1994 or something like that but I made the mistake of not adjusting the gas uh, plug here so it's got a, it's got two settings one and two um, one is the lowest setting which lets the least amount of gas into the um, into the gas tube here to cycle it that would be for high brass you know you don't want to over gas it because you'll beat the hell out of the internals and then two the higher setting lets out the highest amount of gas so you can cycle the low brass now this thing is it's a Russian military special forces combat shotgun, so it's designed to shoot buckshot slugs, not, not birdshot. But um, anyway, I had it on the lowest gas setting, and I was still cycling. I shot 200 um, plus rounds of the Federal target load and had no hang-ups, no FTE, no failure to ejects, no failure to feeds, no stovepipes, anything like that. And I didn't realize until I was cleaning the gun later that night that, wow, this thing is just, and I guess it's because it's got so many rounds through it, it's just really worked, all the wear points have been worked out, it's very smooth. 
But one more thing that I do um, for any of you Sega guys out there that, that are having reliability issues, the number one thing I can say is the gas tube's got to be clean, absolutely clean. I even take like a paring knife and bend the blade and shave the um, deposits from the, you know, the unburnt um, gunpowder and the plastic that's melted in, up in there. I shave that out of there. And I, I really clean that gas tube good. And then I, I polish it with flips. Flips is like a metal um, polish. It just makes the metal, the surface frictionless, really, really smooth. And uh, the guy at the gun store, the, when I bought this, it's funny, he, he was using a Russian accent. As soon as I said I was looking for a Sega 12, I, di I didn't know him, had never met him. He opened his mouth with a Russian accent, and I was like, whoa, this guy is Russian, and he's going to sell me a Sega 12 gauge? How appropriate. And then I found out he was, it was just a, you know, it was just his angle. He was just joking around. But he recommended that flips, and I can only say good stuff about it. And like a $5 little tube of flips. I mean, I haven't even used a third of it, and it's been two years now. Um, it's just the gift that keeps on giving, and it's great for this gun. But um, anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, uh, maybe I'll see you guys on the range sometime. <laughs> All right.